In this video, we are going to look at how data is transmitted from the network interface card assigned to each computer to this local area network and the role played by MAC addresses and IP addresses in accomplishing this task. We are also going to look at how the gateway router is used to get internet access. First I want to talk about IP addresses that are assigned to this local area network. Now for computer number one, we have IP addresses for this computer, 192.168.2.4, and it has a gateway IP of 192.168.2.1. The gateway is this router's gateway. And the purpose of this gateway is if you want to get onto the internet, the computer has to know where to go in order to get you onto the internet. So this IP address points to that gateway for internet access. Now the, the subnet mass of 255.255.255.0, the first three areas of 255.255.255, these are called octets. As a matter of fact, the IP addresses, first three areas are also called octets. And these areas that lined up with the 255s are the networks. So 192.168.2 is the network. And the last octet, dot four this signifies the host and what this simply means that all of the computers on this local area network the IP addresses got to start with 192.168.2 computer number two 192.168.2 number three the same and also the gateway has the same numbers within the very first three octics which are the network part of the IP address only the very last octet can be changed. This, this very last octet is what makes each IP address unique. Uh, for instance, the router, I have 192.168.2.1 assigned to the router, um, 2.2 assigned to the computer number 3, 2.3 assigned to computer number 2, and 2.4 assigned to computer number 1. Now we could assign up to 254 uh, computers on this network. We starting with dot one right up to dot two five four. Now the octet actually goes up to two five five. So this octet here goes up to two five five as well. But the very last octet which would be dot two five five is used for broadcast. And we're gonna talk about what broadcast mean and what it does a little bit later in this video. I also want to mention that these are private IP addresses and which simply mean that you can only communicate on the local area network with private IP addresses. Private IP addresses are not routable on the public network. That is why I have a public IP address here on the interface of this router um, facing the public network. We'll talk a bit more about how uh, IP addresses work on a public network later, but right now I just want to concentrate on the private network so that you'll get a total understanding of how this work before we start talking about the public network, okay? So now we're going to talk about the network interface card and MAC addresses. Now computers use the MAC address to send information out despite popular beliefs that we may use the IP address. That's not correct. It is actually the MAC address that is used to communicate between devices on a local area network. Now the MAC address is burned into the network interface card by the manufacturer. You don't have to enter this number into the computer. It is already burned in there by the manufacturer and your ethernet cable is connected to the network interface card on the other end connected to your switch. Let's say the user of computer number one wants to send a message to computer number three. But all this user has is IP address of computer number three. They don't have that MAC address. The user would enter the IP address into the browser. What the computer would do is the computer would check its cache to see if it has this MAC address for this computer. If it has that MAC address, it's easy. All it has to do is send the message 
from this computer to that computer directly using the MAC address and all is good. However, if that information is not in the cache, the computer will send a message to the network interface card to send out an ARP request. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. What it is, is a broadcast and it goes out through the broadcast IP address. You remember we talked about the last IP address in the range of the IPs is a broadcast, like we have 192.168.2.1 right up to 2.55. Uh, we talked about the fact that we can only assign right up to 254 uh, for the local area network. So you could have 254 devices on this network but the last IP address, which is .255, is used for broadcast. So here we'll be using that .255 IP, which is the broadcast IP, to send the ARP request out on. The ARP request would include the MAC address for this computer and the IP address for this computer in the request. And the request will say, who is 192.168.2.2? And that ARP request goes out to every computer in the network. It's a broadcast, so every device would get it that's connected to the switch. However, only the device that is meant for would actually answer, which is 192.168.2.2. Once this device get that message, it will say, I am 192.168.2.2, and here is my MAC address. So it will send its MAC address back to the computer whose MAC address is in that message, which is computer number one. None of the other computers will get the message that this computer number three sends back. They would hear the broadcast, but they will not hear the reply because the reply is going back on a private channel back to computer number one. Once computer number one gets that message, it will be able to communicate with computer number three through a private channel going directly to this MAC address. Now, every time you send data from one computer to the other computer, you send a frame. And this frame consists of data. And this data comes from the application presentation and session layer of the OSI model. Now, the source port number comes from the transport layer and also does the destination port number. Remember I said the source port number is a randomly generated number, like from your workstation, that would be a random port number, 2023. And the destination port, in this case is port 21, which is an FTP server. So if this computer here has an FTP server, which this computer is trying to access, it'll be port 21 would be destination port. Now TCP is the protocol. Uh, as I said, there UDP. We also have UDP, which is for mo mostly video and voice. TCP is for everything else. And uh, we have the source IP address. The source IP address is the IP address that you are on, and the destination IP is the IP address that you're trying to get to. In this case, would be 2.2, right? And the source MAC address is the MAC address of this computer which you are on and the computer you're trying to get to which is this one, computer tree, the MAC address will be this MAC address. Every time this communication from one computer to another, a frame is sent to that computer. Now of course, this frame is then converted to a format that can be sent over the medium that you're on. Like for instance, um, if you are on Ethernet cable, it will be an electrical signal of zeros and ones where zero is say zero volts and one is five volts, right? And it would go on from zero to five all the way. And that would be the format that you'd be sending over Ethernet cable. If it was fiber optics, it would be a light signal. And that would be light off to light on, light off, light on. And you get the same type of digital signal through um, the local area network using fiber optics as well. Now I'm going to use computer one again, but in this time, 
the user of computer one is going to be trying to get onto the internet now he's going to put this internet address in 200.43.1.2 into the browser now as soon as he does that you're going to realize that the computer is going to realize that he's trying to get off the network so the computer is going to route the traffic to this IP address which is the gateway IP right here so a frame is going to be sent from this network interface card right to this network interface card here for the gateway. Now this frame is going to have the destination MAC address which is this MAC address for this gateway. The source MAC which is the MAC for this computer. The destination IP address which is the IP address for this web server. The source IP is the IP for this computer here, the 2.4 IP. TCP is the protocol. Uh, it's not going to be going to port 21. I have that written here from before when we were talking about the computer. Now it's going to be port 80. So port 80 for web server. And the source port address, as we talked about earlier, this is randomly selected. Um, you could use any number in here. 2023 is what I put in before. It could be any number at all. It depends on what the computer generates. The data is everything from the application layer, presentation layer, and the session layer is all put into this frame and called data. Now, all of this information will be sent over to the interface card here. The router interface card, which is also a network interface card, um, would look for the destination MAC address and compare it to the destination MAC address that it has in, within its interface. If the two match, then it would accept the frame. And the first thing it does when it accepts the frame is to remove the source and the destination MAC address and send it into the router. The, the router would check for the source IP and the destination IP address. The source IP is the IP of this computer, the 192.168.214, and the destination IP is the IP for this web server. When it looks at the source IP, it would realize that it's a private IP and that has to be changed. And that, that's what NAT is all about. We always have NAT provision in these gateway routers to change the IP address from a private IP to a, to a public IP. And the public IP address we use is the IP address that we have assigned for the gateway 201.67.42.1. This is the public IP address. A, pub, a private IP address would never be accepted on the internet. It is not routable. So we have to hide the private IP and substitute it with a public IP. Here. So right now we have a packet because we remove the source and destination MAC address. We have a packet and we just change the IP address from the private to the public as a source IP. Now the destination IP remains the same. So at this point, the packet will go to the gateway. At the gateway, we will add the source MAC address here and the destination MAC address. And then the frame would be sent from here to there. One thing I want you to notice at the same time is that this is a network as well. We have 201.67.42.1 and 2. It's the network part of the IP is the same. In order for these two devices to communicate, they have to be on the same network, just like the local area network was. I just want to let you know that. So when the frame is received by the by this router, it would do the same thing like the gateway router does. It would take a look at the destination MAC address and make sure that it's the same as the MAC address here. And once it's the same address, it would remove both the source and destination MAC address information and send it into the router. The router would check to see what this what the destination IP is supposed to be and it would see that this destination IP is off this network so it would know to send the packet to this interface here. When the packet gets to this interface, the source MAC address will be added to the put to the packet and so is the destination MAC address which is this MAC address here. And once that is done, it would be sent to the web server. 
Uh, I also want you to observe again that here we have 200.43.1.1 and this one's 200.43.1.2. They're both on the same network. You notice the, the octets are the same, just the last one is different. So it's a class C type IP address with the same network and that is important in order for these two interfaces to communicate. So once this information is received by the web server on port 80, the, the web page that this computer is requesting would be sent back to this computer and the job will be completed. If this video has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below and also click on notification so that you'll be notified as soon as our videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.